Last year not only marked the end of an era for Congregation OFMS, but the end of an era period. With the material of our beloved Mr. Niederman, over 40 years of service and dedication to our shul came to a close. This year we honor Mrs. Niederman and pay tribute to our beloved husband, Morris of Blessed Memory. At this time we'd like to share some recollections, some stories, and some pictures of a great era in the history of our shul and our community. Even though OE's history dates back many years before Mr. and Mrs. Bernstein, along with Mr. and Mrs. Niederman came here, literally they were builders of our synagogue into the next generation upon their arrival here in the 1970s. Okay. Mr. Niederman, will you please introduce these people? From the right side is my beautiful wife, Rose Niederman. I am at already, thank God, 51 years almost in May, and I hope another 20 years. And Mrs. Niederman, I know there are probably many special moments and stories over the many years you've been here, but what sticks out in your mind as one of the best moments with you and your husband at OMS? He liked the show. He liked to go every morning, get up seven, five o'clock, and in the night he liked to go in shul. He's a shul man. He was sick, he went in shul. And we had a lot of friends here. He came yeah. in, he chatted with everybody every yeah. day. He liked everybody. And, he, and then, then he had friends, so they come and visit me now too. And Richard Komar comes every Friday night, kiddish making for me, with my wife. very nice. And I, I love it, that's very nice in the shul. The people give me respect for him and they give him for me. Let's go back to the beginning and find out yeah. his story. So he was he was he was 18 years old when they took them away the Hungarian in 1942. They took them away and they he had the one time or two times he see the mother and the father. The rest in 1944. They took the mother and the father and the grandfather and the whole family away. And he no seat more the people. After when he came home in 1945, she, she came home. Him sister, that's he met her. And no more from the family. In 1946, we married. And we lived nice. We no have to, I don't know what, but just we have to life. Where were you living at that time? In a, in a village, in Kamarovitz, we were in, in Russia. In, in 1947, in February, my son was born. And two years later, we come to Ushorot living, in a city, we come to live. And we started, we, he went to work, and I, I worked, and we lived. And after in 1953, my daughter was born. I am born in 19, 1926 in Czechoslovakia. And after the Czechoslovakia come the Hungarian in 1938. In 1937, the Ukraine, Ukraine come in the come 42 come the Germany. They took us away. A lot of people, they took us away. No, in 19, 1944, they take us away. The whole Jews of a, of a city in a, in, a, in a factory was make the stones. And there it was four weeks. After the four weeks, take the train. I just know my mother and my and my sisters. The brother, they take them in one, one forty-two and one, they take them in forty-three. I never met them, I never see more, the brothers. And they take us, bring us a Saturday of Auschwitz. And we stayed the whole night of the train. The second night, they take at 12 o'clock up and train us. They take us up and train. I, and I, I stayed with my mother, and my mother was very weak. When I bring up the, the mother from the train, I was, I was 18. I bring up my mother from the train, 
in, in the German comics, he, he said, Mengele, stop with sticks, with dots, go him, and my mother him, and I am by myself, and I know him, not my sisters, nothing. After slowly, slowly come to me, four sisters lay me. And it was in, in the night, in, in 12 o'clock, we walked from Auschwitz to Birkenau, Birkenau. And in Birkenau was, uh, was uh, this, uh, a shower there, and, they, and, we, and we see it, how the people in the food have them by the feet, by the hand they throw them in fire. And we started very screaming in uh, a Slovak girl, get up the table, she said, don't scream, don't, don't look at him, we'll we be all right. We take a shower and we give him, give him for you the clothes, the striped clothes, be everything all right. That's she we did that. And then we went and shower and the German hid at us a burden body, you know, but naked body hid at us and they shaved, they did the hair and everything. They, when we take them shower and give us the, the striped dress, we stayed this Monday morning, I see we today, Monday morning, they took us in a lager of, of Birkenau. And there, in the day we stayed, we went to sleep. And of the night, they, they started screaming, Munkaj out, Munkaj out. Well, why transport was Munkaj? They went out, they took us for um, the, the last girl from Kashov and Ungwar. They, they don't let go in his people, but they, scared, they, they filled with the, the people going in the crematoria, you know? And that's we went for the number. I was for my sisters the first, 57, 20, Alager, 57, 28. I was the first after meet the, my, my sisters. Uh, and when we have the number, we went back in, la, in the camp, in Lager, of, uh, in the, uh, Lager. And in the morning, the morning, four o'clock, we went to Saint Lapel, five to five, and we went to Bir, Birkenau working. And I said for my sister, we coming here, we went for a shower. My sister said, that's not true. I said, yeah. Oh, but we started working. I tell you what kind of work we, when they bring from the crematorium the clothes, you know, when the people take off and have the clothes and, and, and who, from the, from the trains the clothes and they break them the barracks and we, we rise, we take, we make, picked up the, the threads. That was a lot of the, the Jewish people put that away. And we don't have their uh, toilet, nothing. In the night, 4.30, we went home. It was one bed for six people. And food, don't ask what we had. We have just green gruels. A, a potato we have from the, from the ground with the dirt. They, they, they get the potato eat. In first years, we go and work in the morning, and we see a lot of old people with kinder, with babies going. And one, I recognize my aunt with babies, but I no can go into her, I no see her, nothing. They went in the crematorium. First years was the voice the Jewish people was burning. Far Schwiers. The in uh, before when we worked went from from, uh, from the barak, when Alaga working, we see the in the in the woods the old Hasida staying and they in Davan with the babies hungry, they hold them with the with the packages, with the strammels and we, we walked some barack, we worked, and that was finished already. They was burning. And for the last sight of mine, only one, the one sister, the whole family, but that's all. 
Jelenem z rodziny Nermstein Rifke. Lovet so much, I don't can tell you, I don't know what. Okay, Mrs. Nermstein, were you in the camp also? Yes. Could you tell us your story? I lived in a village with my parents and with my siblings in a place that was called Kamarowitz. And uh, we were three boys and three girls. Well, Maris was in the Hungarian army, so he wasn't with us. He didn't go to Auschwitz. And, uh, once we arrived to Auschwitz, it was just around this time. It was Swiss. Uh, they took my father and my grandfather and my two brothers away and I was there with my little sister Leia and the SS came and he took my hand and he said uh, come with, come Smith Mir and my mother was begging him Z is mine Z is mine and he just pulled me away and that was the last of it but they moved me from there to Salzwedel to work in a night shift in a factory. I was making the shells for the bullets. And in 1945, we were liberated by the Americans. First we were in Budapest, stopped then in Prague, then I went for a walk, and a Czech soldier, and he says to me, and he did it, so he says to me, why don't you go home? You have a brother home. I said, which one? He said, Moshe Mendel. I proceeded to go home, and I did get home. And I'm sure it was his happiest moment of his life and mine that we met from the Watch family. Only the two of us survived. It wasn't Hungarian anymore. The Russians took it out. And everybody was running away from Russia. I was married to my brother. He stayed at my parents' house. I was there all by myself. I was very, very, very unhappy there. So I got married. And right there and then, we packed up. And one of my cousins, our cousin, he sponsored us, my husband and I. Uh, when I was leaving the place where I was born, yet my brother said to me, you just go ahead, you just go ahead, I'll follow you. Well, it took him 25 years. So we arrived to the United States then, December the 20th of 1946. And then my family from New Brunswick came, and they wanted us to come to live to New Brunswick. So we came to live. Brunswick. A few days later, one of my uncles, uh, Sam Niederman, also used to belong here, uh, he had a shoe store. He was going to get my husband a job because my husband was a cabinet maker. He took him to Sears in Robux, bought him a box of tools, and he got him a job, and he worked cabinet maker. And, but we didn't correspond with my brother right away. It, it, because it was uh, the Soviet Union, you know. As soon as we left, they closed the border. And then we started to correspond. Much later, he started to say that he would like to come to the United States. So I started to work on the papers. Uh, we started again. Then, it took a long time very long time, years. And she, she had plenty of troubles and she sent me a lot of papers and they never allowed me out. I had troubles there plenty and she had troubles with me. I called her. She wouldn't want a lot of time to talk to me. She didn't understand me, what I want and what I know want. She had plenty of troubles with me. Although she sent me papers how many times I can. I begged her to send me. She sent me all the kind of papers, what I want. When they want now this paper, when they want the one that let me out, I don't, I know what, the, what they want from me. 
And I somehow, I always find a way to come up. They came, the four of them, to the United States. They stayed with my family for three months. And after that, they moved out to their own house. My brother went to work for my husband. And they are here, and I hope for that they were happy all these years that they were here. When I come to this country, I was the happiest guy in the whole life. I was with my sister and with my family. She has a beautiful family, beautiful two sons and a daughter with a son-in-law, the best that can, what can be to me. We were, we was very close, they was close to my kids, to my son. The best that can be in my life. When she makes something, we dare. She found no punishment to do my son. I mean, the richest guy, we rock the feather, we were always, I was very happy what I have. And I was very happy with America. She said, God no punish me so long. So with my son, I have the best food. As far as his profession was, my father was a cattle dealer, okay? And my brother used to go with our father to the different bazaar. And that was, whether it was a professional, he just did it. It wasn't like in the United States. But in Europe, once you were bar mitzvah, that's it. You had to learn a trade. So when he came here to the United States, he really didn't have a profession. So he came to work for my husband, and I don't know how many years he worked, not too many, and then, um, then he retired from the work. And uh, he was the happiest guy when I went in, in 66 to visit him, see how he's standing on top of me. How did he become such a, a shul person so he about was, the Jewish kite? Well, we grew up in a Jewish Orthodox home. He did not go to Yeshiva. There was a cheder. He went to cheder. He really, really became, and she could correct me if I'm wrong, religious in the United States, that God helped him to come here and he still met all the aunts and most of the aunts and uncles. And of course me, he is with the Schwesterl, the Schwesterl, so he was very happy. And so I think that inspired him, you know, to become fruit. He don't want to go work shopping. He told me that many times when he comes to it, he's not working on Shabbos ever. Are you involved in the shul here? I start to be ashamed of Shabbos right away. I don't want to work. And I promise myself, when I come in a country, I can keep shame, uh, Shabbos, I gonna keep it. And I start to be ashamed of Shabbos. I walk every Saturday with the people in the shul to New Brunswick, then was I at in New Brunswick. And then was very small when I had a lot of people to show in the Shabbos people. And we start to a little, to a little, and we have, we have a big, big congregation now. It was very true. Was very so anything else that you want to add to, add to the story? I, when, when we married in 1946, and after, it was not a kosher in Europe. We no have, we no can't have no kosher. Just he went in the villages, he bought that a little cow, and we made the shoichet geschachten, we cut it, and we have to meet. A chicken we can't, we, we raised chicken, and we bought that a chicken, we have to meet from this. Our, our meat, we no can't have kosher. Was not. A lot of people, 10, 12 families was very, was kosher in the, in the city that we want each other help me the kosher meat. And my kids was very raised 
caution. My son, you know, he did no place. That in the daughter was was home. He was strictly caution. You know, she no can do on Shabbos nothing. Was Shabbos. He said that's a Shabbos, a Shabbos. He thought. And for me too. That's if he was uh, I I I was from a kosher home, from an Orthodox kosher home. My mother is from a Frum family. The father was not so I am from. My mother is from a Frum family. My mother have seven brothers and everybody was was uh, met uh, educated uh, from yeshivas, with the black kapotas, with the head, my brother, my mother had. And that's we re and we lived in, in Russia. We helped for each other. Was a lot of the Jewish people was in hospital sick. I, a couple of times I went to uh, help in taking food Shabbos, eating for kids, a breast machen, I helped. We, he helped. He helped what he can just do when he helped. Very good. We don't have Pesach come Pesach. We don't can't, uh, we have to close the windows making Pesach, and that's what not easy kosher's have in, in between some common up a mitzvah making, up a what for the kids. One, one, one family went to, the son was bar mitzvah, they took the mishul, four o'clock in the morning, and the kehebe come and said, why he's here? And the, uh, the father say, not the father, some, uh, somebody say, the father died, he have to pray in front of the father. It was not easy. So what did he do when he was in Russia? He, he worked in a shoe store. He had a shoe store from government he worked, you know. And Russia was not, uh, not nothing, uh, hence, that it was the government's everything. He worked in a, in, in a shoe store. Yeah. He, he had a good time there, you know. The people loved him, the people this. We was together, but six, seven women, we went to help him for, for poor people making weddings. Hmm. We have a lot of friends. So why did it take you so long to decide to finally come to America? Well, the, the Russian don't, don't give the, them a, the the, the the visa uh -huh. they don't want to the the bachayes the kihibe they don't want to give them I they called me and he, they they told for me you have you have here five sisters four sisters you want leaving the sister and go to to him sister of America I say listen. Be my husband goes and I go to. You want to, I sign and I sign for you. Oh, but your sisters never, never can come them out. I say, we see what happened, I sign for you. And they let me live. After she sent that again, the paper, and we went to Kiev, give them in, uh, in the, this, and we went in of Kiev, and their, uh, their professor, to their hope, Paulette, he said, he hid the, the hand and the papers, he said, in three weeks, wait until we give you. And that was, this time, we, we, we come. That's the, the son was in Harku in college. The daughter finished in Russia, the, the school. It was not so easy picking up the children. They, they know that. You have a nice life, you have a nice house, they said, why you want to go of America? The Russian. I, Moscow, I take tickets, I had a choice to take tickets with the Russian plane or with the American plane. I choose the American plane. And I was always afraid they know I don't go for America. I was always afraid they're gonna take me in jail to Sibir. But I was, I was so afraid. I no slept in the plane, not even a, a minute. And he was very sick the last Shabbos, 
and he, he went met me, met, met, met uh, in school, and I looked for a half, a half an hour we can I find him. I find him of six, seven young corners sitting. And when we bring them home, he, after he sat down by the table, he don't know nothing more. He come to, to himself, was good. Was again went to shoe. He, he left for the shoe. Memory be a blessing for us all. Yeah, it's very. I I look and sleep now. I look the the bed is empty and this this was worse when the last time I took them in hospital. He told me why you bring me in hospital. I won't die and die in my bed. I say okay. I called. I said, Doctor Zimmerman. Can you take him home? Can I take him home? He said, I give him today blood, and after we take him home. Oh, but you take him home, but you have him help. I say, okay. The kids find a, a, a lady, and I bring them home. He was the happiest guy home when he come in the morning, his shoe. He went in the, li in the little room in television, lie down of him couch. This yes. And one day, Friday night, he no make the ready kiddish. Well, he said he no can. He no can swallow. He no can kiddish make. And he went in his bed. This was the last. I see it when he died. And he died with a smile. The kind of dedication that both of these families have shown to this shul over many years is a rare event to see this day in this day and age. What, what can you say, you know, in closing, that people can remember your husband? He liked to, he liked to the shul. He went, two weeks before, he said for me, okay, I have here in the shul two cyphotoires. One he bought that when my son was sick. He was from him, from, from Ungvar. A, somebody bring the, a cipher toy and we bought it and we fixed it. I don't know what the cipher toy is. And after, he gave half money of a cipher toy. The shul gave half money, he gave half money that, that they, they have the new cipher toy. And uh, he, he told me before, I don't know what he liked to have. The parents no can give nothing. He would like to have him something. Give me shoe. He told for me this. We'd like to welcome everyone here in celebration of the Hakosa Seva Torah by the Niederman family and the congregation. Here's another coin too. Here's the coin.
family that's relatives whose tenure as teachers and learners of Torah was torn short during the Holocaust. It's a family that's transplanted itself from the Soviet Union and is trying very hard to give over Torah teachings to its children, to its grandchildren, <coughs> and to the entire community. We all know the Niedermann. We all hear Mr. Niedermann when he yells at us because we don't do things exactly as they used to do it in Bahrain, whether it's compatible with the Shulchan Aruch or not. And we all hear Mr. Niedemann when he gives that proverbial plop on the Shulchan before every Aliyah to alert us that we're about to engage in of Talmud Torah in Sibur in Isinosa. You got it. How do you feel today? I'm just... happy. I'm happy. What does this mean to you? What does it mean? It means to me I, I fly in the in the hill. I am happy. I can do it. And I do it again. It's just not healthy. I be healthy. I do it again. Do you have any messages for the future generations? For after living through the Holocaust and living through, do you have any message that you could leave to your children and your grandchildren? Yeah, I have messages. They never should forget what they went through. And they should always look of the tapes of the higher generation who went through the Holocaust and who went to the labor camp, how much we suffered, and we suffered, and when we went through so much, and we always no give up, and they should no give up, and they should always go through and to be a Jew, and to be a good Orthodox Jew, and should believe always in God. I always, I was not a good kid, but when I was in lager, I covered myself, and I always prayed how much I can, and always believed in God, and God helped me always, and I, they should believe in God how much they should can, and they should know no time never give up in, to believe in God and they always gonna help and believe in God. And I no made so bad in America, I make my life very good with my wife. We very happy. And I have very nice kids and everything. Just be healthy and then God no punish me so much. So I am the happiest guy in the whole world. I'm here. I can do I can be a Jew in America.